On March 23, 2015, I was surprised when I went down to the beach and saw an exposed log. I went and measured it. It wasn't just sticking a couple of inches out of the water. It was closer to a couple of feet. Sand had eroded vertically a couple of feet in just a couple of months. This was a startling amount of erosion in such a short time. I had never seen anything so dramatic in the vicinity of the Lido Shores beach access, and this erosion that had uncovered the log coincided with the city of Sarasota's removal of a huge sand deposit just off the beach. Here's a drawing that includes the Lido Shores beach access. You can see that here. And then the beach that you're going to see in the slides, that's all along here. The area, the channel that normally gets dredged is along here. That was last dredged in about 2009, I believe. Additionally, some of the shoal south was dredged at that time. The dredging that occurred last February and March is depicted in this area here. So here's a quick visual summary of the change that occurred over the whole year from March of 2015 to March of 2016. There were benches in an Australian pine tree that were washed away. The sloping dune washed away. It was replaced with a tall cliff. And the gazebo is now threatened. So on the left, you can see what it looked like a year ago in March, and now what it looks like in 2016 of March. The following slides show the erosion as it progressed over time. Before the dredging, there was a sandy beach with no logs sticking up out of it. After the dredging, we had lost many feet of horizontal beach, maybe 20 feet, who knows, maybe double that. We really have no pictures of what the beach looked like just prior to the dredging, but this is what it looked like after. Notice that the wet sand beach is sloping down from the vegetated areas. And notice that there is no dry sand area between the wet sand and the vegetation. High tide is going right up to the vegetation line. Notice the Lido Shores benches off to the right here. You can see that there's one remaining tuft of grass in front of the benches um, that was after the dredging. I next took some pictures a month and a half later on May 9, 2015. Looking north, the beach seemed roughly the same, but regular tides had been nibbling at the vegetation line, creating the beginnings of a cliff. That remaining tuft of vegetation that you saw back in March? No longer here in May. Also check out the seaweed line. Here it is in March. And here's the equivalent line in May. But additionally, there's all this other big wamps of seaweed way farther inland from that line. And there's a cliff forming along the remaining vegetation line. The next two photos are close-ups, one here of this vegetation and one here by this log. So here is the grass. Notice I've put a yardstick out here, and that's just to get a sense of the height. So the the dune is about, I mean, the cliff is about a foot tall or so. And here is the log near the benches. And here the cliff is a little shorter, maybe more like nine inches or so. In July, three months post-dredging, our neighborhood held a 4th of July beach celebration, as we have been doing every 4th of July for many years. A neighbor captured a picture of a group of neighbors staked out on the beach. From 2014 on the left, and a similar shot from 2015 on the right. Notice how much wider the beach was in 2014. There was room for folks all in here to walk along behind all the people with their umbrellas up. And it was just, a, um, just in general, a lot wider space. By August, we were experiencing significant dune loss at the beach access and to the north. Our beach chairs were now in the tidal zone and in danger of floating away, so a neighbor put them up on top of the dune. The area that I had been trying to measure 
with the yardstick over here had now totally washed away. There was really nothing left to measure there. It's replaced with a, a cliff that goes you know, maybe halfway up the dune. We still have a slope up here, but half the dune is now a cliff. Sometime near early October, seven months post-dredging, there was some strong water that dragged the beach benches north. Here is a photo from October 4th, 2015. The benches used to be here in front of and down beside the Australian pine. They ended up back closer to the seawall. Note that these are not lightweight benches. I don't believe there had been a storm event, just a little more wave action hitting the shore. The water and shifting sand were forceful enough to move the be benches and bury their legs in the sand, leaving them sitting in the tidal area. Note that the benches were not transported south, rather they ended up north of their original spot. During this episode of erosion, the sand and the benches moved north along the beach. Check out the amount of dune loss. You can see the beach benches jutting out here. And you can also see the amount of dune that has washed away. The sea grapes that normally had been growing on top of the dune like this now lay trailing over the cliff edge and in the tidal zone over here, and the same thing over here, down the cliff edge and in the tidal zone. And between the two large sea grape plants, you can see the exposed roots of sea oats, which are now um, evident because the dune has washed away. On that same day in October, I took a photo looking south. The cliff is not as pronounced as the view looking north, but a cliff has certainly formed. You can see it here. Notice there's a sign here and there's a post here. And the post is relatively near the whole tidal area. On the left in this shot is a um, picture from about five months prior in May. And you can see the post here and the sign here. And there's all this beach expanse before you hit the wet beach. And now in October, you have the post here, and your tidal area is right here. So no more benches, and we now have a small cliff that has formed, and the tidal zone is up to the wooden post. So with optimism in their hearts, some neighbors dug out the beach benches and returned them to their spot by the beach access. LSPOA, our neighborhood association, hired a contractor to anchor each bench with two cables 30 inches underground. But as we approached November, eight months post-dredging, with each month passing, the beach was experiencing more loss of dune. This was evident in the growing size of the cliff. Some days there would be some dry sand in front of the cliff, and some days there would only be wet sand. During the first few months following the dredging, I had thought the dry sand was cause for celebration, signaling sand accumulation of some sort. But over the ensuing months, I had come to realize that it was merely a pause during slightly lower high tides. As soon as the high tides rose a little, the dry sand would once again turn to wet sand and the beach lost more dune. Notice how the seagrasses are falling down the cliff as the sand erodes in front of the gazebo. At this point, it seemed foolish to try to use a yardstick to measure the cliff size since the cliffs were larger than the yardstick in some spots. So I had a six-foot-tall man stand in for the yardstick. There had been a young Australian pine growing up on the dune behind the beach benches. With all of the erosion, the pine boughs are now hanging over the cliff edge. A couple of months later, in January, Enough sand washed away that the Australian pine fell over. A neighbor captured this shot around high tide on January 17, 2016. Notice the missing beach benches. This time, nobody in the neighborhood knew where the benches went. Here are the newly uncovered concrete moorings that at one point the benches had been attached to. Uh, eventually, side note, eventually the benches were found. One showed up along the seawall near the Sarasota Sailing Squadron at the tip of City Island, and the other came to rest at Marine Max in New Pass. Once again, the erosive powers of the Gulf moved the benches north from North Lido Beach into New Pass and then east to the bay. Remember that sign inland from the dune edge from the May 2015 photo? Here's where the sign was. 
on the left, and there was a post. Well, in January on the right, 10 months post dredging, the post has washed away entirely and the sign is now sitting right at the dune's edge. A much taller cliff has formed. Here's another shot of the area showing the beach sign right at the dune's edge. And here's a six foot tall man acting as a yardstick next to the beach sign. Here's the Lido Shores beach access again. Compare this with our July 4th celebration prior to the dredging in 2014 on the left. In addition to all the lovely dry sand beach, notice where the post is and has stood for many years. Back to January. Here's the six foot tall man next to the cliff and he's north of the gazebo. Here he's south of the gazebo near where the Australian pine used to be. And here he is in front of the gazebo. The missing post with concrete footer has come to rest in the foreground of this picture. That very post had stood for years at the beach axis. There's been enough erosion and dislodging of vegetation that you can now see a beach sign above the Australian pine stump from the beach. It had always been obscured before that. And there is now something obvious that can be measured regarding dune loss, the distance from the gazebo to the edge of the dune. This is in no way exact and other neighbors came up with different measurements, but this tape measure showed a distance of just under 22 feet. On February 20th, 2016, 11 months post dredging, I went down to the beach to capture the latest erosion that had occurred. My new yardstick was a six foot, five inch tall man approximately. Notice the sign. One leg support is now exposed due to dune loss. There's more erosion in front of the gazebo as evidenced by sand crumbling off the dune and piling up at the foot of the dune. North of the gazebo, the sea grapes may be dying due to having most of their root system exposed, or perhaps it's just the time of year. On March 18th, approximately one year post dredging, I took a look south along the beach. The cliff is now running further south than previously. Despite quite a bit of dry sand, erosion was continuing even without tidal or pounding waters. Just the fact that the beach has lost the sloping dune is exacerbating the erosion. The sand continues to crumble off the dune, creating little mounds at the foot of the dune. A couple of weeks later, the beach is losing more dune around the sign. The dune has eroded up to a foot and a half from the exposed leg. Now for a roundup of the changes. Here's a change in the cliff height from November to March. Between November and March, dune washed away, exposing more roots and leaving the cliff to continue crumbling. Here's a change in the shoreline in front of the gazebo between May and March. Between May and March, the sloping dune in front of the gazebo washed away. It was replaced with a tall cliff. The gazebo is now threatened. I used Google Earth to estimate how much vegetative dune separated the gazebo from the beach prior to the dredging. This image is the most recent available and is from sometime after April 2014. Google Earth's ruler measures approximately 30 feet of vegetated dune standing between the gazebo and the beach. Going backward in time, using Google Earth's history function, there was approximately 31 feet of vegetated dune on April 1st of 2014. This yellow line in each photo marks the measured distance. Google Earth shows approximately 30 feet of vegetated dune on January 26th of 2013. About a year earlier, Google Earth shows approximately 30 feet of vegetated dune. And going back another year, Google Earth shows approximately 31 feet of vegetated dune. 
These photos are not super sharp, so they are in no way precise measurements. But the trend is clear. Over the last few years, there has been no erosion to the vegetated dune separating the gazebo and the beach. However, in January, 10 months post dredging, we measured about 22 feet of vegetated dune between the gazebo and the beach. In the last two months, we lost another three feet of dune. Today, there's about 19 feet remaining. We have lost a striking amount of horizontal dune relative to the historic photos from Google Earth, about a third. We had a lovely wide dry sandy beach prior to the dredging in January of 2015. None of the neighbors spent time taking pictures of how wide it was, but we do have some photos of neighbors enjoying themselves at the beach. I pulled those from our neighborhood website that show a little of the beach itself. Here's looking south, looking west. These last few were from March of 2011. Here's from November of 2011, looking south. Now here it is in 2012. Here it is in 2013, looking west, looking north, looking east, and here it is in 2014, looking east, and looking south. I would also like to make a note about historical norms. Based on the photos you just saw, you can see that the shoreline has been fairly stable over the four years prior to the erosion. But over my 17 years here, I have seen less stable times. Typically, there's a fairly constant level of very mild erosion. It's hardly noticeable, but over time the beach gets narrower. Then, every now and then, out of the blue, the beach gets socked by a huge sand dump. The beach might gain 20 feet overnight. I took this photo at the beginning of January in 2006. We had an unusually large load of sand land on the beach just prior, covering a huge swath of the dune vegetation. Our beach chairs that normally sat on top of the sand were covered almost up to the underside of the seats, even though these chairs were well back from the water. So is there data to support what is so obvious visually? On May 22, 2015, some of our neighbors met with representatives from the city of Sarasota and the town of Longboat Key and their engineering firms. The engineers from both of the from both sides agreed that the data showed that there had been virtually no erosion during the dredging period and the immediate weeks following. After this meeting, we realized that we could not rely on our local governments or their engineers to collect data that would show erosion on North Lido Beach. This is a sad state of affairs, no matter the cause. It doesn't really matter if it's due to fraud, bias, incompetence, faulty equipment, or just bad luck picking the data collection points. If we wanted good data, we would have to try to collect it ourselves. We hired a local firm to take measurements for us. This survey shows multiple sets of data to show the state of the shoreline. Although the writing is not clear enough to read it here, the data demonstrates the eastward retreat of the beach dune vegetation. One of the lines collected from October 30th, 2015, I'll just show you as along here, and then an another one is collected on February 9th of 2016 here, and so the beach uh, vegetation line has moved eastward from here to here, so away from the water. The data clearly supports the erosion that is so evident in person. During and since the 2015 dredging, erosion at the north end of Lido Beach has occurred episodically and continuously at a much faster rate than is historically normal. The difference after just one year is unprecedented during my 17 years here. During my time here, these dunes have never eroded like this. This represents a significant loss of our community's property, and given the accelerating erosion, our community pavilion is now threatened.